How do you develop your own sound on your instrument? Um, I'm gonna talk you through the ways I think about this, developing my own sound on, uh, on any of the instruments I play. Um, normally I, I would consider the tenor saxophone my main instrument, but I play a lot of alto and baritone, um, some soprano, flute, clarinet, uh, I sing, you know, all these different things. I want to have my own voice on that instrument, uh, some I'm more successful with and uh, than others. And the first step I'm going to talk about is chiefly what makes me more or less successful on that instrument. And that really comes down to getting the fundamentals right. Um, to have what I consider to be, you know, my own sound on an instrument, I need to be able to produce reliably and accurately the sound that I hear in my head. So, what, how, you know, how do you, how do you go about doing that? It's, it's all about long tones, etudes, articulation practice, etc. Um, you need to build the foundation of technical ability on that instrument before you can really have a hope of. Um, having your own unique voice that you're happy with on that instrument. So I'll, I'll do exercises um, just on long tones and tone production, uh, experimenting with different timbres, um, etc. Um, and, and each instrument has its own unique set of, um, of exercises you can do on that. Um, another important thing is having the right equipment. Now, equipment isn't everything, but, obviously, but um, having the right equipment for what you want to sound like is going to make it easier or harder. Um, I do a lot of experimenting with mouthpieces and reeds and saxophones and things, and most people say they can't tell the difference, and that's fine. I don't need them to be able to tell the difference between if I'm playing this mouthpiece or that mouthpiece, um, but I feel the difference, and I... I'm either slightly happier or slightly more comfortable on that mouthpiece or whatever it might be, or slightly less happy. And sometimes it's not necessarily, um, you know, good, bad, right, wrong. It might be, oh, for this room or for this style of music, I want this mouthpiece or for, you know, there's a lot of different variables that go into it. So I, I want to have the right setup for me um, for that particular scenario. Some people are, are able to make one... Um, one setup work for everything they do, and that is great. Um, I, like I said, I like to experiment. Anyway, so that's the first thing, I, really, is is getting um, a reliable, consistent sound that you're happy with, to be able to produce that, to be able to replicate the sound you have in your head. And, and that can be in a variety of different, you know, it could be a number of different sounds you have in your head. If I'm going to play a swing gig, you know, I'm going to go for a more of a fluffy sound, and I want to be able to create that fluffy sound. So there's some techniques that go into that. You know, I'm subtoning, I'm using some vibrato, that sort of thing. So, um, and that's part of my voice. I'm obviously, I was just playing a Coleman Hawkins transcription, but um, it was me playing it, you know. I chose to play that. Uh, and so I don't think anyone's going to say, oh, I'm just copying Coleman Hawkins if I use subtone and vibrato necessarily. Um, likewise, if I'm playing a pop solo, you know, if, I, if I'm playing in a party band in this land of a thousand dances and I go, That's that's another technique. You know, I need to be able to play with that straighter, brighter um, sound with more attack. And so uh, that's something that you want to practice too. Uh, and that kind of leads me into the next point I want to make is that um, playing stylistically correct, I think, is actually really important. Um, there's, I, I think... We, it's it's great that we f focus on individuality and having your own sound, but I don't think you need to only have one sound. Like I said, uh, I'm not trying to sound like Coleman Hawkins necessarily when I play a swing gig. That's just kind of the sound of that music, and I, I'm not going to go play Brecker stuff 
over body and soul to a, a, you know a bunch of dancers because that wouldn't it wouldn't be right. Uh, it, no one's going to stop me necessarily, but they probably wouldn't hire me again because it just wouldn't sound good. Um, and so I, I certainly don't adopt the same um, sound concepts or melodic concepts, um, harmonic. It's all you know. You, you want to play stylistically correct, and so that involves studying and transcribing uh, all the different kind of styles of music that you listen to and and figure out exactly what is going on with those um, harmonic ideas and how, how melodies tend to work in different styles, um, all the cliches. Uh, the, you, can, you can get away just with playing, playing pentatonics on a lot of, on a lot of stuff post-1960, uh, certainly in pop bands. Um, and, but you need to know that. You don't, you're not going to play bebop necessarily over a reggae tune. Uh, so I, th I, think, I think you should study and transcribe as many different styles as you think you're ever likely to play and also probably beyond that because you never know. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of the second cue is to um, study a lot of different styles of music um, because you always want to be, or at least myself as a musician, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work, I'm trying to play. And I want to play, it's not just one kind of style of music I want to play, I want to play lots of styles of music because I like lots of styles of music. Um, and the more appropriately I can play, and st I'm still going to sound like myself because all, you know, my sound is a combination of all the different kinds of, kinds of music I play. Um, and I'm not thinking, uh, I'm not trying to copy Junior Walker if I'm playing R&B and I'm not trying to copy Coleman Hawkins. Um, just playing myself, but it's obviously influenced by, by those guys. Um, those are the quintals, quintessential sounds of, of each style. Um, but the the main point is I want to be as useful and as hireable as I possibly can be, uh, so that no one's going to say, "Well, we've got this pop gig, but I guess I won't hire Thomas because he's just going to play Coleman Hawkins over everything." Um, that would be silly. Even you know, you say, you know, this is my sound. I I go vu 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 all day long, but um, I'm only going to get hired to play voo 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 gigs, and that's not what I want to do. So uh, try and make yourself as stylistically appropriate and as musically useful as you can. Um, and so for me, the way I start doing that is, like I said, I go back to Coleman Hawkins and I try and play exactly like Coleman Hawkins in the practice room. So um, again, I think there's kind of a stigma against, oh, you don't, you know, this guy's just a copycat. Uh, you know, Sonny Rollins got a lot of shtick uh, when he was starting out because he just sounded like Charlie Parker, which is not a bad thing to try and sound like. Obviously, Sonny Rollins is his own uh, unique and wonderful style of playing, uh, but you have to start somewhere. And for me, I, I want to, I just want to, you know, there's however many I'm, I make a list of a dozen guys that I, or women or whoever. Um, different players that I really enjoy their playing and I want to figure out what it is that makes them sound the way they do so their particular sound the timbre of, of their um, sound on the instrument the way they articulate the way they think about harmony the way they think about melody all of these things so I'm going to trans uh, I'll transcribe a solo or two figure out what notes they're playing that's going to give me a clue to their harmony and uh, melodies, and I want to, and I'll try and play that solo exactly like them, because um, that, and because I want to be able to copy their sound and their articulation. I'm not going to try and copy them on the bandstand. I'm not going to try and play like um, Cannonball necessarily. I'm certainly not going to play a Cannonball transcription in public, but in the practice room, learning to play like Cannonball or as close as I can come, which is not super close, but um, I want to get as close as I can with especially his articulation. I think Cannibal's articulation is super uh, unique. So I want to be able to do that and add that to my bag, um, just like I want to know what um, Junior Walker and, and King Curtis are playing specifically so that in a similar situation, I'm not going to play, again, their exact solos, but I can play stylistically correct because those are the guys that define the style um, and by doing all this transcription and emulating in the practice room 
when you go out on a gig and you play in public, you the combination of all these things you've been practicing and studying is going to make you sound like yourself. And you, you can't help but sound like yourself eventually. Um, and the more you, uh, to me anyway, I think, the more you copy other people, the more you're just going to end up sounding like yourself because uh, you're just combining all these different elements. And that's, that's what makes us all unique. So that's my spiel. Uh, go study and try and copy a lot of different players and you'll sound like yourself.